Welcome to Nashua ETV's broadcast of the NHIAA High School Girls Championship Hockey Game here at the SNHU Arena in Manchester. I'm Tom King along with Rich McDonough and we have a treat for you today. The Bishop Girton girls, seated number one, will take on number three, Oyster River Portsmouth, the co-op from those two schools for the championship. And Rich McDonough, I think going into this game, Bishop Girton seeking their second title in three years. There's only two words you have to mention. Jenna Lynch can do everything. Yep, she has been phenomenal all season long. She scored five goals in the semifinal game in the, in the win the other night. And uh, that was over the Brady Trinity Londonary Co-op. And John Collins, our, our good friend and broadcast partner, had a great line. He <laughs> called her <laughs> Connor McJenna. You know? <laughs> Didn't she have a hat? So, Didn't she have a hattie about halfway through the first? Yeah, yeah, she did. Amazing. Um, what you would expect today, and this is what I saw the other night, is Brady Londonary just poked, tripped, banged, did whatever they could to Lynch to try to disrupt her and keep her from being able to be effective. It didn't work, but I'll tell you what, they did get a major penalty, a boarding call, and a game misconduct for a hard hit against the boards, which right. is not allowed in girls hockey. There's no checking in girls hockey. Right. And that was something else. I was shocked that she was able to come back and play in the game, and she did. Well, she's fast, she's tough, uh, she's a one. <laughs> She's a one-person clear, if you will, with her backhand abilities. I'll tell you what, though. BG's got an up-and-comer in junior Jasmine Shattuck. She is a very good player, and she's being introduced right now, number three, as she yep. goes out to the blue line. Right on cue, Jasmine. That's pretty good. But uh, she is somebody to watch as well. It's a good uh, alternative to Jenna Lynch. They had to play without Jenna Lynch in the quarterfinal game and they beat barely beat the keen co-op three to two right a team that they had beaten nine nothing during the season so all you have to do is take a look at that and you see the difference the uh, made. that is the barometer right there yeah exactly yep well the last time i was in this arena was in 2016 when the bg boys played bedford we'll have that game for you also on national etv and that was in the championship game uh, it's changed a little bit here. There's no more. There's no longer a press box way up in the le left corner, but there is, and they also have two big boards above the goals, which is different in this arena. They have, they weren't here the last time I was here. Um, the last time BG was here, because if you remember, two years ago because of the pandemic, they played. They did not play games at the same venue. And it all had to be interspersed and they played at Dover Ice Arena as this arena was shut down. Uh, so BG played their final against uh, St. Thomas would have cut at Dover at Dover Ice and won the championship that year, an unbeaten team. The last time they played here, the girls was in the finals in 2009, losing to Hanover 2-0, and we broadcast that game also on national. And this is why you get the name TKPedia, my friend. <laughs> exactly. All right, everybody, national anthem time here at the SNHU Arena.
Boy, that is the speed version of the National That Anthem. really was. It was wow. com compressed. My just, goodness. Just don't play it backwards. Yeah, no kidding. They zip right through that, and we are good to go. Well, this should be an interesting game. Well, it's, uh, as, as always with high school and youth sports, how do you limit your turnovers, keep possession of the ball, and, and make, uh, you know, well, unforced errors? The, the keys in this will be what Oyster River Portsmouth can do to Jenna Lynch to try to disrupt her. Possibly but not also, much. But also, keep in mind the goaltender. It's still the same. Hockey is all up to the goaltender a lot of times. Gurdon's got a good one. I think the, one of the better ones they've had over the years in Scar Casey. Yeah, I love the nickname. Yep. Well, her name is Scarlet. Scarlet. But she emailed me. She says, I like being called Scar. I like so that. So I said, okay, you know. Well, as an old lacrosse goalie, Tom, yeah, yeah, I exactly. like it a lot. Right. My, my old nickname was Scoop. But I'll tell you what, in lacrosse, you can let up a few goals. You can't do that in the game of hockey. Uh, one can change the whole thing. Right, exactly. And, and here we go. We are good to go at 10.02 a.m. on Saturday. You're watching this. It's Sunday evening and maybe further out with a rebroadcast on National ETV as we are on tape delay. Go ahead, Rich McDonough, take it away. Well, Oyster River, uh, they control the opening draw. They look to set up high. They dump it into the left corner and give a little chase, but BG is there. Get it in and get it out, as the old hockey line. And Scar turns it away, clamps it down. We got our first freeze up of the game at 14:34. 15 minute periods in uh, high school hockey. 15 minute periods, and even in the postseason, once you get to a six goal lead in the third period, it is running time, and that goes all the way. Hockey is the best running time. It goes all the way through. Doesn't, doesn't stop unless there's an injury. BG wins that first uh, draw there in the left dot. On camera, Tim O'Neill, our executive producer. DJ PDP, Pete Johnson. And look, right, just like she heard you, uh, Jasmine Shattuck is all over the ice making plays immediately, Tom. She's on the second line. And she goes and, and gives the, chase in the back. That's what BG needs, is they're gonna need production from that second line in a championship game. Shattuck bangs it off the dasher there. Good fight for it between the battle of number 10s there. That's Grace Minichi, who's done a good job there. And there's Scar wrapping yep. up, taking yeah. it off the chest protector yeah, if you're at 1349. DG, you're a little upset that you've got to deal with two shots on goal already in this game, and you haven't been able to do anything on Oyster River yet. Uh, they haven't even possessed it in the uh, attacking zone. Second draw to the right of uh, Scar this time. And there's Jenna, number 20, off to the races. Poked yeah. loose there nicely. Double teamed as soon as she Sienna crossed the Metcalf. blue line. Exactly, they squeezed her, got some pokes, got the stick off the ice, and the puck went free. So and now this, a nice centering pass, yeah. nobody home. On this free ice surface, Rich, she's going to have to use that and use her skating ability to the best of, that she can to get away and right. use the open ice to evade the... The double teams. Another Let's, centering pass and no one there. Yeah, keep an eye on number 19, Riley Goldthwaite out there. She's she makes a, plays. She's scrappy. She's had a good postseason. Yeah. She scored the game winner against Keen Oyster River. Well, and there's the first uh, right on paddle there. Goldthwaite was right there and almost took it. That's Elizabeth Willent, number five. She loses her twig in the back corner. Makes it a five on four briefly, and BG takes advantage of it, gets it into its attacking zone. Jill Scanlon, number nine, carried the carried it through the uh, top side in the crease in the slot there. Tessa Wilkie's another one who great, gives uh, coach great minutes there. Gurdon had some opportunities there, Rich. They need to put more shots on the net. They were looking for the perfect pass, the yep. perfect play. Drive the puck to the net and then let the play develop and that'll work out for them. Well, and the uh, Clipper Cats there certainly got it out, but it went all the way down the ice for a first icing of the game. Catherine Deans taking 
taking the draw for the Clipper Cats. Bishop Gurdon controls it, gets it into the right corner below the red. Puck rolls free, and the Clipper Cats now fighting for it. Nice pinned up against the boards there. 12 minute mark. BG emerges with it. That's number 10, Grace Manici, doing her best in there. Gets it into the corner, and Some we have good another tie defense, up. Good defense by Oyster River Ports, but they are not allowing shots on goal. Yeah, they are Lynch getting... takes another hit. That looks like Kira Jacobs off to the races. Dishes to a wingmate there. Misses the cage right side. Scar was ready and in butterfly position. Looking to deflect it off a skate. And Scar looks to tie it up, but he pokes it loose. Gets it up the left dasher. And here comes all world number 20, Jenna Lynch. And again, we get into post ch poke checks right on the blade, right on the ice, taking it off, taking the puck off the stick. And it goes the other way for the uh, Clipper Cats. Mallory DeSantis is number two. Second time we've called her name. There's Natalie Gaffey, number five, doing a great job on defense, freezing it in the corner as uh, DeSantis was looking to cross. Comes right to the uh, right goal post there, and Scar freezes it. And we're going to have another draw at her left dot. 10 BG's got to be careful. The more Oyster River puts pressure on down deep, the more chances there are of a penalty. Kelly Zhang taking a draw for the Clipper Cats. She had two goals and the game winner in the semis. And as usual, Jasmine Shattuck in the mix on a lot of the draws for BG. Controlled by uh, the Clipper Cats. Try to get it into the middle, but no, denied. Long cross ice pass for the Cardinals. Get it into the crease, but nobody's home. Can't poke it in, goalie was ready. But they can't get it outside the blue. Another long cross crease pass. Misses everything, hits the corners, and now it's up against the boards. BG still in control, good possession here. And there's Tessa Wilkie, can't hold on to it, and it goes down the left side as we get a line change for the uh, Clipper Cats. Line change, and BG still couldn't take advantage of it. <laughs> and that just went right under Natalie Gaffey's uh, uh, stick. Get the blade to the ice, right, Tom? Exactly. Yeah. And Gaffey controls it in the corner, looks to get it up the boards, gets it out. Over the first blue line, what happens between the blues? You get it to your uh, All-State Player of the Year. And look, they're jamming her up again. Two, two players, three players, sacrificing possession. Clipper Cats get a turnover, but can't do anything with it, and down the ice we go. There's enough space there that they close, so no icing. And BG bringing it up right wing at the 928 mark. Nice centering pass. Hits the glove hand of the Clipper Cats goaltender. Well, Lynch did what she needed to do is get the puck out. Got it to Goldthwaite. But again, Oyster River coming up big defensively. Cowison has made some good plays early. Got a, a paddle save early. Now get a glove hand save. Couldn't control it. But the deflection went to corner and it ended up harmless. Nothing harmless out there when uh, Carly Green has the puck for the Cardinals, but she turns it over, goes up. Something of a body check there, not called. It's Grace Manici, she's a tough player, tough That wasn't kid. a lineup hit, it was more of no. an uh, incidental, incidental collision. Cowison gets the pillows closed up in Butterfly. You get the rebound, but you're still on the goalie's side, and no room to shoot. Maggie Farwell, number 19, is a team captain for the Clipper Cats. Makes a good play to get it to the boards. BG holds on to it. Goes back to the corner. I tell you, uh, the Clipper Cats are doing everything they can to squeeze every player. They are boxed in, and yep. they're hoping for one of these loose breaks. Yep. Trying to keep the uh, Cardinals outside. Consequently, Cards have had a few shots on goal, but nothing, uh, you know. Nothing substantial. Substantial or deadly. Nothing as a goalie that makes you think twice about the next one. 
routine saves for Cowison there. Yeah, they've looked at a lot of film. They've seen the tendencies and everything else and yep. where the Cardinals like to go. And they know they like to go down the middle. Here's another break for Oyster River right there. And a score. Wow. Kira Jacobs just stayed with it, number 16. Get the puck to the front of the net and good things happen, five Tom. Five hole, five hole play. Casey was watching the other player and right. the puck just deflected in front. Wasn't really ready for it and tipped home. And Oyster River with the first goal of the game. The bouncing biscuit. Always trouble for any hockey goalie, no matter what level, right, Tom? No, no doubt about it. Yep. BG controls the next draw at the center. Trying to get it in deep, can't. Oyster River's getting a stick on everything possible. Throwing the wood around the ice. Backhanded pass from uh, number three, that's Jasmine Shattuck. Very athletic player. Can't keep it in the blue lines. Everybody tags up and looking for the reset. Oyster River gets another pairing on D. Yeah, Kara Jacobs got that assist. And that uh, Jacobs got that assist by sheer hard work. OR gets it out. Goes right to Grace Manici. She can't hang on. And now it goes to corner. And everybody gives chase left side of the ice, right side of Scar in the net. And now it's behind the goal. Try to wrap it up the dasher. And there is Jenna Lynch in control, looking to pass forward, going up up rink to uh, uh, Tessa Wilkie again. Tessa can't handle it. OR pokes it out, gets it over the blue line. We got a three on two situation developing. Who's gonna rotate back? Top slot. Oh, oh good kick save, but there to collect the garbage. Yeah, it was OR. For the rebound. Yeah. She just skated past Mallory it. Mallory DeSantis had a wide open net staring her. Yep. After a good save by Scar. Now here comes Lynch looking to create. She gets it behind the net. Back pass centers and lights the light. We got a tie game at one. Beautiful back pass from behind the net. And it finds, it looked like number, it was a crowd there. Yeah, that's Riley Goldthwaite. From right. Lynch, Lynch knowing that she's covered. Goldthwaite coming down the middle like you're supposed to in the slot. Takes the feed and one times it for the goal and it's a tie game. Just a minute 41 after Oyster River took the lead. Well, I had said earlier that Goldthwaite does a few things here, a few things there. You know, a little Swiss Army knife type of thing and there she was, but that was a beautiful setup. Right there. Tell you, all eyes were on Lynch, of course, as she was. Well, looked that's like she was going to circle behind they the know, goal there. They know she's going to be double teamed, yep. right? They know they're going to be doing everything they can to try to stop her. Lynch watching, so Lynch, puck watching. Lynch is not a selfish player by any means. No, she sets up. She she, she will, will do whatever she can to win a game, and if that means setting up her teammates, that's what she's going to do. Well, we saw it on full display there. That's why she's uh, what, Western New England. Western New England is where she'll yep. go to school. I think she's studying some kind of, you know, uh, molecular, molecular biology. biology or whatever, you know, stuff. Real that, dummy. Uh, huh? Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> Here we are at the five minute mark of the first uh, period at SNHU Arena, and we got a 1 1 game. Her parents told me. Cardinals that, and Clipper her, Cats. Her parents told me, and I said, what was the history of sports class all tied up, all filled up, or what? <laughs> Here comes another break for the Bobcats. And there's Scar the, down in the crouch, gets the pillows to the ice. Or the Clipper Cats, as I would call them. Yeah, Clipper Cats. Yep. That's a great name, actually. Yep. But Scar was in textbook position there. Nothing was but going under those pillows. if I'm Gurdon, I'm not happy with the opportunities that they've had. They've had far too many in this game so far. They have to tighten things up on the defensive end, but it's a credit to Oyster River Portsmouth, too, the way they're skating. They're skating, but they're also poking the, the pucks loose 
when Bishop Girton has the uh, possession in the offensive zone. And then they're getting it out over the blue. Watch out, another centering pass, but the Cardinals will take it out. Anytime you see that puck in the slot, you have to worry if you're Girton. I'll tell you, uh, Clipper Cats are swarming every puck. They, at times, can't get it out using the dasher, but that time we had a deflection, no icing, so we got to give chase. There's Jasmine Shattuck again, number three, gets it in, gets it out. We get. First call of the game from our officiating Can you crew. tell this game is a 10 a.m. game? Because <laughs> they're learning a whole lot. Yeah, and I missed my coffee. Right. Oh, you do? Yeah. Did you have it before you left? Missed it. Oh, no. You got to make it at home. Yeah. Face off outside the blue line after the offside. Cup of strong black coffee. What I, that's, what I need. That's what get. I survive off at yeah, times. Yeah, exactly. No sugar, no nothing. Just bitter. As bitter as it gets. Megan Rinkos uh, gliding down the ice for the uh, Clipper Cats. Rinko goes rink, loses control. And now we got a battle for it on the uh, left board. Ooh, may have iced it. That's going to be an icing. Yep, definitely. And it'll come back into BG's zone. And a quick period. There's only 3.09 left in the first. Yeah, we're barely, tied one. barely any whistles. Until, well, we had one icing earlier, we got one icing now. And Scar is going to see it to her right side of the goal, goal, cage, goal crease. And there's Catherine Deans, number 63, one more time. BG Controls gets it behind the cage and then up the boards on the right side. Here's Lynch. Good outlet pass, Lynch. Two on looking one. Looking to create again, though, we see a nice poke. Yeah, she needed to get rid of it a little sooner. A little sooner, get under the uh, yep. get under the twig. Because she had a teammate streaking down on on the middle, just like before with Goldthwaite. Right, Whalen uh, ricochets it off the board, but it careens and goes off the oh, glass. Oh, in front of they had someone coming down that side. Yeah, they had a goal. Looked like that uh, pass off the boards there caught the doorway. BG can't get it to point. Clipper Cats back pass. We got, uh, there, there's um, Deans off to the races, gets it right side. She's already got a goal in this game. Grace so. Minichi plays great defense. Ushering. Yeah, let's see, we're gonna get a call? And we got a call. Yes, we do. And we got our first uh, visit to the uh, sin bin. Right on cue, that was Grace Minichi, number 10, who is a co-captain. Or do we? Oh, she's in the box. It's three, four, yep. Oh, that's right, the box is on our side. I'm the looking across the box is on our side, I'm yeah. I'm looking across the way. Exactly. Yep, Minichi with the, but you know what, Rich? That's what happens when you're a step behind. Well, then, when you're a stride behind, you are going to commit penalties if you're not careful. Right. And that's what happened there as Oyster River beat Girton down the ice after Girton had opportunities. Yep, they hit into the boards. Yeah, two-minute roughing penalty yep. on Manichi. And you've got to be careful with those because you're going to go out for two. You don't want to go out for five. There was a point of emphasis made about, oh, I'd say about 10 years ago mm -hmm. on the boarding calls where they wanted those to be major penalties because of the safety issue involved, maybe eight to 10 years. Makes sense in a lot of ways. Yep. Wow, that was a whistling shot that went over the uh, left side of the pipe. Banged into the boards. BG stays control, short-handed. And we're at a one minute mark for the penalty, 113 in the first period, still tied 1-1. Clipper Cats looking to convert on a power play here. They center it, BG with a nice poke. And of course the, the, the problem is with Minichi in the box, she is one of their better penalty killers. 
Ooh, Casey's got to be careful. You've got to control that. Puck comes sliding down like that. Glove it. Well, and tell you what, and Jenna Lynch, you know, does it all, really. And nice off the boards, cross rink. Yeah, that and was, it settles down be, uh, past the opposite that blue a, line. That it kills a, a little more time. That was a clear as well, they try to survive this penalty with 30 seconds well, left. Well, Jenna went hard to the ice to make a play uh, with Minichi in the box. But I'll tell you what, at this point uh, on Tuesday night in the semis, she had already hit the ice about five times. <laughs> she hasn't hit the ice just that one time. No, a fearless player. Yeah. So uh, Oyster River Portsmouth is doing and a Minichi good. And Minichi is out of the box right on the puck. Can't make a play on the defense. And we're winding it down. How many, as time, we how many times do you see that? Ooh, oh, watch out. Oh, and a breakaway saved by the bell, Tom. Gurton has gotten over there defensively, though, so I think that that was probably going to be broken nah, up. They got a good rotation, but uh, everybody, there was a gasp in the uh, arena here. We have played one period here in Manchester. The score, it's a good one, folks. Bishop Gurton, girls won. Oyster River Portsmouth won. Buying for the NHIAA Girls Ice Hockey Championship. We'll be back at the start of the second period right after this. everybody to the SNHU Arena here in Manchester for the second period of the NHIAA Girls Hockey Championship game between Bishop Girton and Oyster River Portsmouth. I'm Tom King along with Rich McDonough, Dylan Smith and Tim O'Neill. I can't tell them apart anymore. <laughs> On camera, Pete Johnson, DJ Petey Pete, our executive producer as we are set to go in a 1-1 hockey game. And I had a very interesting chat in between periods with Angela Barubi. Do you know who Angela Barubi is? Any relation to Craig Barubi? No, but I don't, well, I don't know that. But she is the girl who went into the athletic director's office time and time again, 20 years ago, to get ice hockey started for girls at Bishop Curtin. Well, that's a great conversation to have. Then. Yes, it is. And she talked to the team right before the game. Told them to soak it all in because you don't get here very often. Props to Angela Baruby then. I said 2009. I was wrong. I think it was 2010 that they were last here. So that's, uh, uh, what are we talking about? 13, if I do my math right, 13 years as we are underway. Take it away, Rich McDonough. All right, Tessa White. Uh, Clipper Cats control the opening uh, second and period what, draw. Here's what you want to see, a shot right away on goal. Right away, stick away. Got to away. pressure the goaltender here. Yep. Clipper Cats have been really rotating well up between the Blues to stymie uh, the speed and momentum that the Cardinals have. Yeah, any, any time they cross the blue line, they're being contested. Right. There's a nice play by uh, Grace Minichi who took that penalty. Oh, she's going to shoot it. She should. Yep. But Enough once again. Yeah, she's got, you've got to shoot that puck as soon as you get it over that line and you're in the center. Put it on net. Well, and it's clearly the Clipper Cats' uh, uh, mission was to squeeze every puck when you get in, when the uh, Cardinals get that, into the attacking And knowing zone. that, you need to put the puck on net so it gets away from the defenders. And then you can crash the net after crash you shoot the it. Net. 
pick up the loose change and maybe get a yeah, second opportunity. Yeah, exactly. You just and we got a trip coming up, hooking or a trip. I, let's see. It's going to be on Oyster River, I believe. Yes, it right? Is. Yes, it is. Yep, they're going to go out. BG on the power play, and that means a great opportunity for Jenna Lynch because they won't be able to double team her. Right. Haley Gagney was sailing with the puck there. Yep. Fresh ice, and they couldn't control it. Shots on goal, Oyster River out shooting BG. Here's what I'm talking about. They're out shooting BG 7 to 5. When you've got the offensive firepower that BG has, no way you should be outshot in a hockey game. All right, and after the hooking call, Clipper Cats are in the sin bin for two minutes, and BG is on a power play. They poke it to the middle where the crowd what, one, is. One thing in ice hockey, in high school ice hockey, is the one thing you got to, and I've seen it time and time again, the shorthanded breakaway is always a factor. Jenna oh, Lynch right with a alone. nice cross ice pass. Score. And I tell you what, what a shot. Jill, Scan uh, Jill Scanlon just lifted it over the glove hand, put it in the upper right corner. There was no doubt about it. Tape to tape pass from Jenna Lynch. And at the 13-18 mark, Bishop Girton takes its first lead, 2-1 on a power play. No doubt that where that one was going, Tom. No doubt about it. Scanlon found herself in alone and put it home. Upper right-hand corner. And that pass found its way under about three different uh, blades for the uh, Clipper Cats. Clipper Cats take the draw, get it into the corner to start the period as we hit the 13-minute mark. BG gets the puck back, but... That was a fantastic assist. One forty-two on the time, and Gurton with the lead. Grace Minichi got it in deep. They couldn't squeeze it out of there. Or with the puck in the uh, BG zone and a good job by the blade. Gert yep, Gurton defense. They didn't allow that shot to go through. Rotated back and took the puck on the skate and get it out left side, but it goes right back to the Clipper Cats, who get the puck in deep one more time, give chase, moves it around behind the net, stays up against the board, and BG off to the races one more time. Haley Gagney going down the right side, gets it back, good goaltending again, a nice poke. And here come the Clipper Cats going right side, getting back on D, and some uh, good checking from backside. That's Tessa Wilkie, who's been doing it all game. Crosses the dot and heads for the corner to the left side oh. of Scar. Oh, good oh. poke loose. I tell you what, Natalie Gaffey got a stick on it, or it might have found its way into a sh uh, skate and a shot. And we got icing again at the 11.40 mark. And it's coming back down the ice. 11.40 left to play in the second period. And as Rich just told you, two to one, Girton with the lead. Amy Lee Cowson in, in between the pipes for the uh, Clipper Cats, sees it to her right side, gets into her crouch. Shots are even. Butterfly. Shots are even at seven apiece. Seven apiece. And we'll have a redraw here. Carly Green gets in there, can't control the draw. Fisher Cats wind it around the boards. And Grace Minichi is back on D to prevent any outbreak there. I like that, sucks up that. Like that green tape on the stick? I I've sure never do, seen actually. that before. Yeah. That's a first. Maybe Usually it's black tape or white tape. That's it. Hey, maybe it distracts, uh, you know, uh, the left wing there. Well, uh, the, you know, I'm wondering if I mean, that's allowed. I mean, it is, but, I mean, it, it's, it certainly is different. Let's uh, consult the uh, rule book between periods. You wonder. <laughs> Here's Minichi taking the puck up left side. She's got the captain C on her shoulder there. Again, good forechecking uh, techniques here by the Clipper Cats have limited the rushes for BG. Got some good contact there, no call. Clipper Cats taking left side. Down the slot, fans on the pass. But Clipper Cats are in the slot. 
put it back to the corner and they rotate in. Defenders are back. Oh, inter inter intercepted. Yeah, the intercepted out. pass. Can't make it because the, the puck was bouncing and high. Gurdon he was knuckleballing there. Gurdon had to ice it. They iced so, it. Some pressure by the Bobcat or Clipper Cats or whatever we yep. call them here. Yep. Clipper Cats. Some co ops use a completely different nickname that they make up for their team. For example, Hollis Brookline Dairy Field, they're the Warriors. The Warriors. Right. And uh, Nash was South Pelham in boys. They are the, oh, shot wide. They are the Kings. Alvern Milford, they call them the Admirals. But here, I believe they just stick with the two names. The forechecking has been really good. Oh, there we got a loose puck and a Scanlon. break. Scanlon. Scanlon's looking out. Oh. Couldn't quite control the puck between her stick. Got kind of lost between her legs there yep. as Whistle. she had a chance. Whistle by, right by uh, Cowan. Cowan's uh, left, uh, right pad there. Poked out beyond the blue. Everybody's got a tag up. BG goes back ice to get the reset. And we come down, the, and there we go, getting it to the front of the cage. That forces Cowison to freeze it, and we'll have another uh, face-off, probably to her right side there. Well, I'm going to make a bold prediction with 9.30 left to play in the second period. I don't think Jenna Lynch is going to get five goals today. She hasn't scored yet. I believe she'll score at some point in this game, but five goals, no, that's not going to happen. I don't think. Not the way Oyster River's marking her, as they say in soccer. <laughs> And here comes Lynch right on cue, but lo loses the puck, and back it there, goes to there, OR. There you see a perfect example of it, right? But she gives chase, trails, and takes the puck away, gets it around, wraps it around, takes top side of the crease, but it goes wide and goes behind the net. BG has it in the corner. That's Manichi, number 10. And three people surrounding her once again. Go. They dislodge the puck, and, and they go off break. to the corners. Good job there by Manichi. Let's see, there's no, there's no Going call. hard into the boards. Yeah, but you know what? She skated into the boards. I she don't did. think Lynch pushed I don't no. think not Lynch, but I mean, uh, Manichi pushed her. No, that was Farwell's own momentum. Yep. The skates got loose on her. Uh, it was a good no call. It just sounds bad. Well, she made it look bad, too, as she was lying on the ice. All right, here comes OR, but hey, I tell you what, one more time, L Riley Goldthwaite lurks around the blue line and keeps it in. Good player, good score. 821 in <laughs> very, the second. Very simple in her explanation, talking to me last Friday night. She goes, puck was there, I saw it, I shot it, it went in. <laughs> <laughs> very Julius Caesar-like. There we go. Okay, game I saw, I conquered. The one thing that Jenna Lynch can do is she comes down the wing. You don't know where she's going to go. Is she going to take it to the left side? Is she going to try? Because she can maneuver the puck and go into the middle better than any girl in the state right now. I'll tell you what, Maggie Farwell is showing some wheels as she took that face off away and got a clear up rink. Got it into the corner, but loose puck one more time. BG controls. Tries to get it out. The blue liners for the uh, Clipper Cats ready and send it back in to the BG uh, defensive zone. Jasmine Shattuck collects the puck one more time. Ooh, I'll tell you what. That was uh, number 19, Maggie Farwell again. She whistled it into the crease. We had a deflection. Didn't go in because it went over the, and up into the net. Up here. and high over, but that's the way you score. But right. I'll tell you what, we have played almost eight minutes in this period. Yep. Oyster River has not, Portsmouth has not had a shot on goal yet. And I think they're about ready to get one here. And there it is. Scar turns it away with her right pad goes to the corner and they scrap for it against the boards and one more time Clipper Cats hold it inside the blue but it ricochets right back to BG and that's Haley Gagney number eight back pass across the ice finds number 19 Riley Goldthwaite one more time who gets it into the left uh, right corner well right corner if you're the goalie left corner if you're on O and Goldthwaite oh in front 
bouncing pass into the into the slot on top of the crease there. That finds a, its way off of the BG stick. Good job by the defense yep. not to allow that puck down as low as it could have gone. Well, she kept her blade on the ice and then lifted when the opportunity presented itself. Puck trickles away, and there's a good scrap for it. And here we go, goes up ice. BG, that's Goldthwaite, cycles back, gets it to a running mate on the D end, and then they put it in deep to the right corner this time. But it's the Clipper Cats who come up with it. Oh, they, wanted a, they wanted a holding call there. Yeah, they probably should have gotten one. Yeah, they probably should have. Letting them play no in a championship game. Letting them play a bit. I'll tell you what, Jasmine Shattuck's all over the ice. Right there, she didn't get a puck on it, but she changed the trajectory of a pass, and it goes, uh, bounces free. BG's able to collect the loose change, bring it down the ice. And again, turned away. Every time they're squeezing away, it's been effective. I mean, still a 2-1 game, 5.47 remaining in the first, in the second period. All right, Lynch is on the ice now. Let's see if anything changes here. Got some fresh legs at the deep pairing. Clipper catch it. That's the way, get the, get the puck. Try to get it in deep, but it ricochets wide. Everybody's got to tag up, and bet they send it back into the right corner. Clipper Cats are the first ones there. And there's... Sh well, they're face guarding Jenna Lynch, and... Might be time to double shift her at some point in this game. See if we can get a mismatch. Yeah, you've got to get another goal. You've got to... The two to one lead in a girls game is BG so chases, hard to handle. But they call handle. icing at, at the 501 mark, so we've played 959 for you math majors. Second period, it's still 2-1 Bishop Girton. They fell behind early, 1-0. Knotted it up in the first and took the lead later on. On a power play, I believe it was, Tom, right? Yes, we've got the goal, scoring is simple. Goldthwaite from Lynch, Scanlon from Lynch. Carly Green lurking in the slot there. Couldn't get one loose. Two, the deep pairing is back for BG. It goes to the corner, centering pass from behind in the corner. Ricochets off a skate and a stick and bounces out past the blue with BG and Minichi in control. Uh, one more time. Deep pairings for the Clipper Cats. Two We're rotating one. back. Poke the puck loose. Here we go on the left wing. Gets it to the five hole. But uh, Scar shuts it down. Gets the pillows to the ice. 418 remaining in the second. And one more time. Another shot on goal right into Scar's mask. And there's a scramble for it. Goes right co uh, left corner. BG comes up with it. And there's our friend number three, Jasmine Shattuck, making a play one more time. Whistling it down the left side of the ice. And we got a, I couldn't see the call there. Let's see, box is open and yeah. we are gonna get a penalty. After all Was it that. A trip? They'll announce. Oyster River not happy. Jamie Long arguing the call. Not a very happy camper right now. Uh, he's a seasoned coach, he can argue. Right. Probably uh, can effectively argue more than some newer coaches can. They give him the benefit of the doubt. Doesn't change the call though. Yeah, it was a tripping call. Yep, two minutes for tripping, and we've got an injury as they've got a trainer on the ice taking a look at Scar Casey. After she, during that flurry, must have gotten hit. Uh, she's okay. She's staying in the game, so she's all right. That was wondering why the delay, and I thought someone called timeout, but no, they had to check on Casey. And she is all right, and we are set to go. 
Well, as an old lacrosse goalie, sometimes it just hurts. And you need to take a breath, but she's playing a great uh, period here. She took one off the face mask, paddled away a couple, got the pillows to the ice, and closed that five hole. Should ask Tim O'Neill down below us if he paid for that seat where he is. He's sitting there <laughs> nice and comfortable. Loose in front, look at this. Let's see what BG does with its uh, second power play of the game. Do they put some distance between them? The centering pass, can't get it down, can't get this puck down on the ice. It was knuckleballing. Right in front. Nice back check there. And Clipper Cats get it out past the both Blues, past, past the end line, almost using all 200 feet of the arena. A nice job with the uh, forechecking here for the, yeah, good for the penalty, clip, yeah, clip, good penalty kill by yeah, Clipper Cats making BG just chew clock. Yeah, we're at the 316 mark remaining in the period, 112 on the penalty, and one more time, gloved down by uh, uh, that was Lynch, Lynch but she yep. had to wait uh, on the delay for everybody to get everybody onside. had to tag up. Yep, and they get it into the corners, but one more time. OR is there to pick up the loose puck. Now we got a centering dump. What off a shot and here's escape. Lynch. One more, even, a, even on a, a shorthanded situation, they are squeezing Lynch every time she touches the puck. And, and, she's off, and now she's off the ice. 37 seconds left on the power play. Not a very effective one so far for Gert. No, they've never, they've really not been able to get into their set and uh, credit OR for disrupting A complete the disruption. Yep. And now with Lynch out, Burton's gonna try to squeeze it in in these last 20 seconds. 15 seconds left on the penalty, and OR is getting to every loose puck on this uh, shorthanded situation. That, that's well done, well played by uh, the Clipper Cats there. Two seconds, one seconds, they kill the penalty, and right on cue, a whistle. <laughs> Have and Mallory DeSantis gets released. They and the ref blows a whistle. Gurdon has two power plays in the game. Oyster River one. We've only had a goal on one, and it's the difference in the game right now. Jill Scanlon on the power play, 141 into the second period. Assist by Jenna Lynch. The Cardinals lead it two to one. There are exactly two minutes left to play in the second period. In punto. Dos minutos. <laughs> well, this is an international broadcast. Sure. You get it anywhere, right? Yeah. Be online eventually. I have it on good authority that we have families watching in Florida. BG gets out, out past its own blue line there. Oyster River promptly knocks it back into the corner, but BG is the only one home. Ooh. Could have called Might that. have called a trip there, but Could've. they let that one slide. Yep. Kind of skates got tangled up. Sometimes you don't want to call it. Here comes Lynch. Tries to cross over. That worked for her a couple times against Concord. Yeah, had to skate. Didn't work there. Yeah, had to skate in between the double team, and they knocked it away. She almost got the puck. Her strategy that time wasn't to shift side to side. It was to try to squeeze the space. Right. And unfortunately, she just didn't have enough room, and it's still... Two to one game, one but ten left. As they have done all game, Tom, the Clipper Cats are sticking to their guns and their squeezer, and they're getting sticks on her stick and lifting where they can. It's it's a great job defensively. Oh, deflection of the goal! Yeah, that's a seeing eye puck right there. Well, it saw its way to number nine, and she just tucked it in. That's her second of the game there. For Scanlon, yep. the deflection, and then tipped over to Scanlon and an open net with 105 to play. Well, she had a goal and an assist in the semi, Tom, and uh, she's got two. She's lit the light twice today. She came to play, and she's taken up some of the slack for a, a well-defended yep. uh, Jenna Lynch, who was the player of the year and obviously a first team all New Hampshire player. Three to one, Bishop Girton with one minute left in the second period. And a one nothing lead for the Clipper Cats is now a three one lead 
for the Cardinals. And that is going to be tough to overcome in a game like this, the way it's been played so far. Right. The Clipper Cats dumping it in and not getting the not getting the chase on the O end, even though they're doing a great job on the defense. But when it has come down to it, Scar has been Johnny on the spot in the cage for the Cardinals. Clipper Cats sail one by their right side of the cage. Ricochets off the iron, but it pops out to BG. And it looks like number nine, our goal scorer, uh, Jill Scanlon, off to the races, dumps it into the left side. Clipper Cats are home. This assist to Tessa Wilkie and Riley Golanowski. They're just going to kill the period here, it looks like. But an errant pass goes right to Jenna Lynch. She controls to the corner. Four seconds, Ooh, three she seconds. Shoved to the ice. Shoved to the ice. No call. But that's that'll wind us out of the second period, Tom. At the end of two in the girls' hockey final, Bishop Girton Cardinals are at three. And the Clipper Cats from Oyster River, Portsmouth, are at one. And that'll do it for the second period. We'll be back with the start of the third right after this. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. I have a mentor, and she convinced me to continue my education. No one receives a diploma alone. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, go get it. You can do it. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back, everybody. Tom King along with Rich McDonough. The crowd is cheering. The tension is mounting. We are entering the third period of the NHIAA Girls Hockey Ice Hockey Championship. And it is a 3-1 Girton lead as we get into the third period. The Cardinals 15 minutes away from their second state title in three years. I'll tell you, that was the Cardinals' first uh, center ice draw control of the game. Is it a premonition? That's one thing I don't pay a whole lot of attention to are the face-off situations and winning them. But they're so important in a hockey game, but you're so glued into the opportunities and the shots and everything else that it kind of bypasses me. So you can win a face-off in, in this game. You're, you're doing okay. Well, right out of the gate, uh, Fisher Cat, uh, Fisher Cats, the uh, <laughs> Clipper Cats. <laughs> we'll we'll talk the, about that in a month. That's just down the street. Right. Uh, you know, they're sticking to their script, and I think they have to. It's worked. They've limited uh, Bishop Girton's best players, and they're in striking distance. Two goal lead is the worst uh, lead in hockey. But right away, well, Bishop Girton put something you saw, off the paddle. Well, as you saw, though, Lynch, where she was she? She was on the ice. That and one's she, icing goes right by Scar coming on, back down. She was on the ice as she went down, and uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't. You know, there's no penalty involved because she wasn't really hit, but she's struggling to get the puck off, and yep. down she goes because double team, double team, and triple. We've she seen has that. not scored a goal in this game, but. She has two assists, which is the idea if you're going to be double teamed like that. Now she's down low alone. She was unmarked and almost got the puck to put it in. Right. Lynch is nothing if not pragmatic. Fisher Cat, <laughs> Clipper Cats get it out there. I'm <laughs> eagerly <laughs> awaiting baseball, Tom. This is great. Centering pass to Lynch gives off her stick and wide and hits the boards as does one of the uh, Clipper Cats players. Hard hit, but she gets up. Loses the puck, though. That was Sienna Metcalf. All foot, five foot three of her. They dump it in, get it onto Scar's stick, yeah. and she freezes it with her glove and hand. And she made that a little harder than it really needed to be because she lost her balance. Yeah, her skates went out and yeah. out from under and into the net. 13.03 remaining in the third. Love these, uh, in. love these screens above the goals. Video board. They're huge. 
Almost as big as the one in your uh, living room, right, Tom? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> Clipper Cats whistling That's around a whole the board other story. corner to corner. Yeah. Costco sales coming up. Cats get it into the rear corner, get up the board, but there, one more time, I tell you, Jasmine Shattuck, you mentioned her at the outset. Does the little things, Tom, doesn't she? She does tons of little things, a glue player. Yeah. She's always there. And guess what? It's going to be her team next year. Well, that's looking good. Doesn't her father have some uh, regional sports pedigree? Well, I covered her father when he played baseball and football at Pinkerton Academy. Pinkerton, right. Back in the early, early to mid-1980s. Probably got the best photo I've uh, ever taken of him. What was the photo? Play at the plate. He was a catcher tagging out a legendary runner with the dirt fly. Here's All Lynch right. possibly Made getting him. that puck, but no. Knocked away. Made him look like uh, Johnny Bench. Oh, he had a great look on his face. <laughs> the runner with a head first slide, too. Jay Shattuck. I hope it's framed somewhere. I don't have it. Oh, uh, cl score. Clipper Cats. There it is. They got right in alone, no one near her. She took it off the left side. Yeah, and put banked it right hard. by. Yeah, I mean, she picked up centrifugal force as she came across top side of the crease, buried it. I mean, Scar had no chance on that one, really. Nobody was home, nobody could rotate. That makes it 3-2 for the Cardinals. At the 11.45 mark, what, a minute ago, I think I said the two-goal lead in hockey is the worst lead exactly. you can have? Oh, it is. No doubt about it. Yep. It's both physical and psychological. Yep. Now you're only one up when you had all that momentum. Another cross-ice pass. Nobody home, but had somebody been there, could have tapped another one in. So that's what... Uh, the Clipper Cats' philosophy is they stuck with their defense. They squeeze. They get the pucks loose. They get it in. Boy. And sometimes you get a chance, and you look. And now. You're doing a great job now, forechecking. Well, now. Unassisted by, <laughs> excuse me, by Jenkins. But now, Rich, the fact that Lynch hasn't scored in this game as she hits the ice again, this is starting to be a factor. Well, she's very experienced, very seasoned. She's a player. Is she going to try to force it? We'll see. Bishop Girton fortunate to get that out of the scoring zone. Getting it up the right side. This is going to fasten No your icing. It's waved off. Fasten your seat belts, everyone. We've got a great game here with 10-18 to play. Elizabeth Wallen doing a great job retrieving the puck and then getting it out off the corner board. And then her number five counterpart, Natalie Gaffey, pokes it loose, gets it back for the Cardinals. They take it over the blue line, whistles one past the goalie, and then uh, Lynch gets to the uh, substitution door. And the rebound stays with the Cardinals. Essentially, pucks in deep. And here we go again with the uh, Clipper Cats poking it away. Number 19, Maggie Farwell, who's done a darn good job today, making the kind of plays that uh, that uh, Jasmine Shattuck has done time and time again. And there's our double goal scorer for the uh, Cardinals, Jill Scanlon, number nine taking the puck away and putting it back into the corner. But one more time, here we go. We got off to the races, left side. That's number 16, Kira Jacobs, who just got her goal. And she can't get it off the backside of her stick. And it sails wide and goes to corner. Bishop Girton at home and four checking. Takes it back from the Clipper Cats. Jasmine Shattuck, one more time, fighting for it hard in the corner. Whistles it around behind the goal. And she's there to retrieve the next slot pass from behind. No dice, nobody home. Clipper Cats swarm the puck, get it loose, get it left, and get it up the ice over the blue. And they dump it into the uh, offensive zone, their offensive zone, number 91. That's Eliza Farwell, who's got a sister on the team, giving chase. 
Number two, Mallory DeSantis now goes to corner. Sandwiched there by Lynch and uh, her line mate there. Puck's rolling around in the corner and there to collect it is Lynch and here she comes up ice. New Hampshire player of the year yeah, and take it away once right again. There, yep. Number 10, MSR is doing the doorway. Getting the Cardinals get it in deep. It gets a squeeze. 8 12 left in the third period. Now they're up 3 2. They're down 3 2. I would double shift Lynch if she could do it. Yeah, I think she can. But we, you know, there's 8 12 left. What else is, is there after this, right? Well, she I mean, takes I, the face and knocks it out so to the left wing. This is all they've got. They've got, a, as Phil DeVito always says, leave it all on the ice. And. That's what his team has done most of the season. Carly Green doing a very good job for checking for the Cardinals there. They keep it inside the blue. Now it's outside. Everybody's got to tag up. Number eight has a tripped over the uh, yeah, uh, ice ghost blew, out there. Blew a tire more yep, or less. Yep. That's Haley Gagney. BG pokes it in. Here comes Lynch giving chase on number five, Elizabeth Wallen, who's been doing a great job in the corners for the Clipper Cats. Puck squirts outside the blue line. BG's got a retreat with possession. Uh, Haley Gagne doesn't fall down this time, but she is tripped. <laughs> and there and is a call. And yep. she's headed to the box for two at the 725 Just mark. Just as you said it. Doesn't fall down. Down she goes, but this time it was caused. So. Well, uh, you know, let's go to Vegas with exactly. that one, Exactly. No kidding, huh? <laughs> 725 mark. BG's up 3-2. Rich McDonough here with Tom King at the SNHU Arena for the girls Jacobs New Hampshire is in the box, final. So it's one of their better players. That's right. Out. So and that's the double whammy right there. Yeah, she scored that last goal, but she's also been doing a lot of pokes uh, on the defensive end and really thwarting a number of BG uh, trips to the net. Bouncing biscuit in front, rolls across and behind her goalie, squirts its way out to the right side of the ice. BG can't collect it. And the Cats get it all the way down the ice. Scar couldn't get a full stick on that pass, and it rolls out dangerously, but BG collects it off the boards. There's number nine, double goal scorer for the Cardinals, Jill Scanlon. She gets it in deep behind the net, but one more time, it's the Cats picking it up. And now getting it all the way down the ice, goes right to Scar off the right, uh, right pad. And number two for the Cardinals, Riley Malangoski picks it up, gets it down, all the way down, sails around the corner. That's going to be an icing on a power play for BG. Never a good result. No, never a good result when you ice it on the power play. A minute 10 left to go in the penalty. 3-2, Gurton with the lead, 6.34 yeah, left. She just got too much juice on it and it took off. 6.34 left to play in the hockey game. And it's going to be the left of Scar Casey at the dot. Players at the hash. The Puck drops and it's BG coming up with the puck. But again, you have number 10. She's been doing it all game. And Massar poking it away and just disrupting the flow that the Cardinals right. are used to having. And Gurdon had to come all the way out on the odd delay, you know, possible offsides, get everybody all realigned. And right. now another flip and down the ice. This has been an outstanding penalty kill. There's 45 seconds left on this penalty kill. They've done it a couple times, they lost one when BG took the lead, I believe, on their power Here's play. Here's a chance for Shattuck. Shattuck going goes, right center. She goes high, and that's the right idea. That's where BG has been able to beat yeah, the goaltender. Yeah, they've gotten over Cowison's glove side a yeah. couple times, but not this time. Six minutes and punto on the dot, Tom. 35 on the penalty, and it's to the left side of Cowison where the uh, faceoff will be. BG looks to control. But again, the Cats really get their twigs right in the uh, line of uh, fire there, and they're very disruptive defensively. And consequently, they create a loose puck. They get it out, get it over, and it's going all the way to the left corner. About 180 feet of ice they used right there. And we got a whistle. 15 seconds left to go in the power play that they have not had a shot on goal yet in. Chance for Gurton to a golden opportunity to get, and there's another icing call on the power play as well. Uh, golden opportunity to cash in and get an insurance call, not happening. 
Let's see if they have any opportunities later in the next six minutes as Scar Casey has well, to make tell you, a shorthanded save. We had a shorthanded save there and an easily won draw. Shots on goal are even in the game. Well, now, now, Oyster River Portsmouth <coughs> has gotten 14 and Girton only 13. The story in the game, saved by, well, look they get at this. the puck in through the you know, Who's screens. on the power play here, right? Yeah, right, it Scar just, was screened badly. Not a good power play for Girton. She's gotta be scratching her head. Kira Jacobs out of the box, gets it over, causes a turnover. Cats take it to the, to the crease, can't get it up. They rotate it back toward the blue line and the Cats are just relentlessly getting it in top side of the if crease. If I were Tom. to tell you, with five minutes left in the hockey game, that Jenna Lynch does not have a goal yet, what would you think, right? I would think you've had a rough day. But BG is clinging to and a 3-2 lead. Unless it hits the keep, we got icing again, 448. And obviously that two goal lead evaporated with one, and it's three to two, 448. And in case you're wondering, of course, there is overtime in NHIAA championship hockey, and it's timeless. In other words, we go 15 minutes. We go to where we win. Yeah. They won't Zamboni the ice, I believe, in, be in between for the first overtime, but I'm not sure because it's a full overtime in front. Wow, Scar Casey has had to come up big. She has right got after. 14 saves in this hockey game. Yeah and some of them have been outstanding, including the one where she got her face mask on it. 428 left in the third. One goal game, anything can happen. Well, the things that are happening right now is this, this period right now belongs to the Clipper Cats. Yeah, they have really asserted themselves. And I think that's what they were told to do. It, you know, yeah. I mean, you go into the intermission and then all of a sudden you have a, a sense of awakening, more or less, and that's what's happened. Well, they stopped getting it to corner so much, and they're really just throwing it into crease, and it's paying off. They took a 1-0 lead in the first period. Girton answered almost immediately. Three unanswered goals, and then all of a sudden now the goal in the third period that cuts the margin to one, and we've got ourselves a dandy here at the SNHU Arena. Someday, so at some point during the next two broadcasts, I'm going to call Verizon Wireless. But that's... <laughs> Uh, shot to save Scar by Casey. Had to, she does it again. I mean, that was a blocker save. She's had to make pad saves. Jamie Long said, what do we what do we do to just lurk? Keep it close and it's take simple. our shot shoot. down the stretch. Shoot, shoot, and shoot. Get the puck to the front of the net and good things happen. They certainly are doing that in the third. 343 on the clock. And Bishop Girton probably wringing its hands right now. What do we need to do to get out of this? as the Cats have totally turned up the heat. Now they get it to the, get it in deep to the corner. But there's Jenna Lynch showing the speed and why she's all, all state. Got taken down, taken no down, call. Taken down, no call, it's absolutely right. And again, they get it across crease. No need to make a save there. It whistles wide left. 3.15 on the clock, top side. Again, we get it in deep, We're off a pad save for Scar. And Bishop Girton looks gassed right now, Tom. Definitely, no doubt about it, they are tired. And that was incidental, they're just going for the puck. And when that happens, you get play like this. And then uh, Cats can get some fresh uh, players on the ice. I mean, they tried to get down to block a shot and were too tired to do it. Yeah, and the, uh, a bunch of them are hunched over. Even Lynch looks tired. Look at that, not getting to the puck right there and Casey has to make a save because yeah. no one got to the puck. Only Maggie Farwell did number 19, 236 in the third. BG hanging on to its one goal lead. 236 from the state championship, but I'll tell you what, this one is gonna be hard earned if they're gonna win it. Well, I nothing, expect nothing else than frenetic down the stretch. Important draw control there for BG. And Lynch gets it around the ice, gets it over uh, to uh, number nine. That's Jill Scanlon, who's got two on the board for him. Another good poke. That was Shattuck right there. Yep. Losing Clipper, the puck. Clipper and Cats lost get it right stick. Can't do a whole lot without the twig, Tom. Gets behind the goal. Number three for uh, Sienna Metcalf.
Nice play by Lynch that time. She uses the boards. Yeah, Minichi started that. That's a hook. Can't and they're gonna have call to it. call it. The arm goes up. Whistle gets blown, 154. And BG is going to finish this game with a power play if nothing else happens. And Tom's got a beautiful shot there. That might make the telegraph. It'll go somewhere. <laughs> to put it online and in the print, who knows? But I tell you, that was one of the few hard breaks, rushes that BG has gotten today. You know. Well, they gave Lynch a break on yep. a shift and then put her back out there so she, her legs were a little fresher. And now the Bobcats call time, or someone did, I don't know who. And Gurton will try to set up the power play. Phil DeVita and his staff will try to set this all up for well, Gurton. I'll tell you, the, uh, both goalies are breathing a sigh of relief there. One, because we had a rush that uh, ended up with a penalty. Now she's got to uh, play man down, but that's yep. part of it. But Scar, uh, Casey, needed a break, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, it has just been nonstop, inner pads, inner face, right across the crease, even if it didn't get a stick on it. And it, she must have felt like she's been in a pinball game. Well, what this does, I mean, this is a huge penalty for uh, taken by Oyster, Oyster River Forces because what this does, it takes away the chance maybe for the goalie to get off the ice. Right. So what do you do? I mean, there, you're on a power, I mean, Gurton's on a power play. If you take the goalie off, you know, you, 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 you equalize things, but it's still, you don't have the man advantage. There's no no use to Correct. do it. Correct. I mean, that changes the, the it changes so everything you do So what you've right got to hope for is the one thing that happens in high school hockey uh, very often is the shorthanded breakaway attempt. And who are your speed players and how much <laughs> gas in the tank do they That's have? That's just it. And they got a long way to go. This is a big sheet of ice. They got a long way to go to get something done. Well, and BG's back liners are probably going to play a little retreat. Uh, you know. But you don't want to get out of rhythm here. Gurton, 153 away from a state championship. Ooh. Lynch off of the goalie's mask there. That was a hard shot. And that puck was sitting right there for a rebound. And it was whistling. Minichi handling behind the net. BG power play. Oh, knuckleballs over uh, the stick. Forces a jam up behind the net, but that just chews clock. Minichi lost her glove there, got back in the game. Definitely, I might add. That's that, this power play will be will last the length of the game, which is right now minute 13. Minichi gets it topside, throwing puck and to the front. And there's a chance right there, but there's Lynch, which is why Gurton keeps Lynch back at the blue line on power plays to prevent that from happening. And she does it right there. Had she been in deep, that might have been a breakaway. Yeah. And now they do pull the goaltender. Yeah, you have to. You have to with nothing to lose with 47 seconds left. And Gurton with a man advantage. All that does is create an equalizer. So the man advantage is gone, but the net is empty. Gurton, 37 seconds away from a championship. The Cats could have had a, an odd man rush, but Kira Jacobs, number 16, is out of gas. This she game could not is, keep up. This championship is going to be Bishop Gurton's. I don't see Lynch any way around it. That, that's uh, going to be icing. The yes, it is. it is. Well, now there's and a chance. 19.3 seconds left. Do we use a timeout? We'll see. But again, there's no man advantage for Oyster River Portsmouth with all they pulled the goalie. They're even strength now. So, desperate times call for desperate measures. But I'll tell you what, I have a funny feeling in 19.3 seconds after a timeout now yeah, is Coach taken. Long, that's yeah, Coach Long, only thing he had left in Just the quiver draw, as you got to. Draw up the play, but you know what? I've seen it happen before. After the timeout, they draw up a play off the faceoff and they score. So this is it. This is the last possession. This is the whole deal right now for the Cardinals. Got to win the draw. I'll tell you what, this championship, if they win it, will be very sweet because it was hard earned. In this tournament, two 3-2 three, two games, maybe a 4-2 if they get an empty netter, but two, two one-goal games, 
and another game in which Lynch was just beaten up and she still scored five goals. Today, no goals for Jenna Lynch, yet they're still up 3-2 with 19.3 seconds left. Yeah, and Oyster River Portsmouth got a, you know, oh, what a we're great, playing through the tape, but they, great they, job. They, they took out uh, Hanover, you know, which yep. is set a high bar. And they gave up a hat sport. trick to Lynch in a regular season, lost 6-3. Right. Yeah, 6-3, so, right. So this is just a fantastic job by the Clipper Cats, but Gurton looking to survive. 19.3 seconds. Great work from the Scott crowd. Casey tries to get the crowd going. Well, let's see what Coach Long's got up his sleeve with 19.3. Draw poked out to the left board. You just want to flip it down the Manici ice. Manici rolls it out from along the dasher. It goes Ten to seconds. corner. Nice And block. there's Lynch rotating over. Gets it off her skate, gets the corner, jams it up in the left side. Two, one. More shot. one. And that's it. There we go. Cardinals add another one. Uh, it's hard to put a price tag on that as a player and a coach. Great celebration. And lots of lots of camaraderie there with the uh, the Clipper Cats. Center ice hugging their goalkeeper who played a heck of a game. That's uh, Amy Lee Cowieson. She made save after save after save. Took it in the face mask a bunch of time. Paddled pucks away. Got her blocker on it. Got her both pads. Got the butterfly. Five hole was controlled and held a high octane Bishop Girton girls team to just three goals. And again, as Tom and I have mentioned, game, uh, minute after minute, all world, all state player of the year, Jenna Lynch was held without a goal but had two assists. And the great tradition of hockey with the handshake at center ice on display at SNHU Arena. And the goalies lead the way. And the coaches are collegial. I tell you, they respect each other. They like each other. I've been an NHIA uh, head coach, and there's a real camaraderie out there. And uh, they certainly show a lot of class, and they all understand what it takes to get this far in any sporting discipline, especially hockey, which is rough and tumble. You deal with a lot of injuries all year. And then you get to the medal ceremony, winds up a season, it's bittersweet. And the NHIA officials take the ice over near the uh, scorer's box. NHIA committee members are presenting awards. And by tradition, the coaches and captains come up and sit for Oyster River Portsmouth to get the runner-up plaque. Tough to swallow sometimes, but heck of a season. You had the teams ranked number one and number two going into the playoffs. And they certainly showed why they were number one and number two and gave us a great game this afternoon. Hotly contested third period. Santa's played a heck of a game.
Coach Long's got to feel good going into the next year. He's got a number of uh, underclassmen and juniors returning for him. Freshman looking at more impact next year. Maggie Farwell played a heck of a game. and the senior goaltender, number 31, did a great job. good about their season. Great sportsmanship from the BG girls as they look to have their championship medals. And the captains and coaches come up and get their championship plaque, repeating on uh, 2021. Add one more to the trophy case down there on Lund Road. And Coach DeVita gets to hand out the medallions to his champions. It's a great feeling. Number three, Shattuck, what a game she played. He also played a good game today, valuable minutes. Scanlon with two goals today. She's got to feel great. She'll be enjoying this one for a long time. Minichi was tough getting back down the ice and creating havoc. Goldthwaite played a great game. Dynamite comes in small, small packages. There's the uh, player of the year. Held without a goal today, but she had two assists and made some great plays down the stretch to preserve the lead. There's Scar Casey, did a 
darndest in the third period, save after save after save, when the Clipper Cats were given a relentless finish. I do. And there you have your champion, Bishop Girton Cardinals. Got a whole lot of laundry to pick up on the ice. But boy, does it feel good. I've been there myself, and it'll last with you forever. Props to both squads, both coaches. One more time from SNHU Arena here in Manchester, New Hampshire. It was our pleasure to cover the New Hampshire Girls Championship hockey game. So thanks from our executive producer, Pete Johnson, our great camera operators, Tim O'Neill and Tyler Smith. Tom King was on the call with me. I'm Rich McDonough. Tom King is down getting some interviews and I'm signing off and we'll see you down the road. Thank you all for sticking with us. Have a good day, everybody.